Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another Amonkhet Remastered Draft here on the channel. Before I dive in, I do want to remind you that if you enjoy the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the comment section down below with any questions or feedback. You can check out the stream live at twitch.tv slash Nikolai Bolas. Okie doke. Right off the bat, we have a very fun choice. Overwhelming Splendor is very, very good if you can enable it. And pretty much the only way to enable this, from what I have seen of this format, is with Oasis Ritualist. Uh, or just building a super late game control deck, which you can definitely do, I think. So this card just single-handedly wins you the game when you cast it. And I think it's going to be worth picking, at least so we can see if it's something that's worth building around. Because if Overwhelming Splendor is not a card you can play in the format, then... I would like to help my viewers figure that out by actually trying it out. It's a lot easier to experiment when you have the card in your deck, after all. After that, there are quite a few good commons in this pack. Uh, I mean, I think Baleful Amit's a pretty good card it's, as well. Uh, a 3 mana 4, 3 lifelink is a great body, and the minus 1, minus 1 counter can usually go something on a less relevant creature, like a 2 2 that's been blanked, or even sometimes a creature with a death trigger, so that card's good. Uh, Vizier of Tumbling Sands is another way to kind of ramp Overwhelming Splendor if I end up in blue white. A Catcher's Avenger is a nice aggressive threat. Cartouche is great for aggressive decks. Essence Scatter is very solid. Hooded Brawler is very good. But we're going to take Overwhelming Splendor and see if we can get that to to work. Following that up, easy, easy sifter worm here. This is a fantastic addition. It's literally what I want to be doing here. Uh, I want to be playing a green ramp deck, and sifter worm is another fantastic top end payoff. Uh, the scry three and then reveal the card is oftentimes going to gain you like four life, uh, or sometimes like three life, but generally just going to really help you stabilize the 7-7 seven, seven creature, and green-white is the optimal home for the Overwhelming Splendor. I already was going to prioritize ramp, but now I have a critical mass of expensive cards to ramp into. If I had started the draft off with something like a Cartouche of Knowledge, I think I still would have taken the Swift Sifter Worm. If I take a No Catcher's Avenger, I would take a Gust Walker to follow up. Um, irrigated Farmlands a little bit farther down, because normally a Cycling Land would be great, but because they're Cycling Lands at Common, and that uh, that you can get it's a little bit lower of a priority especially because I'm hoping to be green white anyway greater sandworm is pretty solid if I wasn't taking the sifter worm here I think I would still take gust walker it keeps me in white even though maybe Aven would be a better pick actually I probably would take Aven because it fits better with the overwhelming splendor plan okie doke moving on to pick three Already, we're seeing a little bit of tension here. There is not a white card in the pack that I care about taking. Mighty Leap is not the card that I would want to take here. There's also not a green card that I really care about. Ornery Kudu, Pouncing Cheetah, not really optimal cards. The best card in this pack, I think, is Ruthless Sniper from a power level perspective. Uh, it's pretty just great to just have a like little cycling sub theme in your deck get some minus one minus one counters flying around you could even play like green black and if you get enough oasis ritualists splash overwhelming splendor uh the cycling sub theme isn't as large i think still it's probably correct to take the sniper over the desert of the glorified uh that's just my initial instinct the desert is quite good but i don't even know if i'm playing black and i generally like to take a card of a color before i take a land of a color uh that's just my personal approach Though in a weak pack, I could see taking Desert. I probably would take Desert if this Ruthless Sniper wasn't in the pack. Okie doke. And now Naga Vitalist. This is an interesting draft because we're seeing some good cards for more aggressive decks. We're seeing things like Tawcrop Elite. So we could have a pretty nice beat down deck if we hadn't taken the Overwhelming Splendor. Uh, there's also some nice cards for grindy cycling decks. So Wander and Death does go very well with a Ruthless Sniper. It goes pretty well with the Sifter Worm. We've seen a couple of compelling arguments. So maybe we could wheel some of those and have a nice, very powerful Ruthless Sniper in our deck. But Naga Vitalist works really well with the Sifter Worm, really well with the Overwhelming Splendor. And overall is the type of card that I think fits perfectly with the two of my, my two best cards because I think these are better than Ruthless Sniper. Renewed Faith is also interesting because it can cycle to gain me a little bit of life and get me closer to Overwhelming Splendor. And uh, we'll see, see how it goes. I think Battlefield Scavenger can also be quite good. It looks like a white aggressive deck is maybe open in my seats, but maybe white is just open in general and I'll see some of the more controlling cards that you want for white, like Compulsory Rest and things of that nature. Okie doke. So it looks like Black Cycling is open. We just saw a Wander that there's now another Wander in Death. There's a Vile Manifestation, which is a fantastic card. Compelling Argument, another one. So maybe we could have had, we could maybe wheel a couple of those and have had three of those to go with our Ruthless Sniper. But here, I think we just have to jam the Oasis Ritualist 
It is so perfect with the Overmoon Splendor, the Sifter Worm. You can even cast Sifter Worm on turn five. We'll take as many of these as we can get, and it could even allow us to splash Overwhelming Splendor in a green black deck. Green black has looked pretty open here. I would love Wander and Deaths and things like that. And Overwhelming Splendor, if we get like three Ritualists, we could totally splash that off of that. Uh, just the Ritualists, maybe. Vile Manifestation is a great card, but we're just going to stick to the game plan. We're playing a ramp deck. We have a lot of good ramp payoffs already. Huh. Now, this is interesting. In this pack, again, our I think it's interesting because our first pick, Rare, influenced this draft so much. Because if we had taken an aggressive card, we'd have a very aggressive green-white beatdown deck. This is a late Gustwalker. Probably signifies that white is open. I don't think we want Evolving Wilds here because we are looking to play just a two-color deck. Um, there is a Ronus' Stalwart, but that's not really good for a controlling deck. I think Gustwalker is just a better addition to the deck. I wouldn't mind Evolving Wilds. I could splash with if I get enough Ritualists and things like that. Uh, and Gustwalker is more of an aggressive card, but it's also just so efficient that you'll want it in any deck. Uh, just pushes through some damage. So we're going to take the Gustwalker. And now we'll take a Ronus' Stalwart. I'm not a huge fan of the Defiant Great Maul. It does have some pretty cute synergies, especially if you get two of them into play. Soul Stinger is pretty cute as well, but we're just going to keep taking some two drops for our deck. Late Wasp. Wasp is just a two mana, two one. Flying, which is just a good body. But we're just going to take Greater Sandworm. Worm. Another top end card for our ramp deck. We have two ramp cards right now, and we're actively pursuing more. And now Hooded Brawler wheels. This card is great. Really a nice sign that green is probably open. Another Greater Sandworm. Our deck is really looking good right now. Green is looking wide open. We're fine passing cards of other colors. Pouncing Cheetah. I don't think we want the Mighty Leap. We're more of a play a big creature and hope it works out rather than play a combat tricks style of deck. I guess blue is looking relatively open. We could speculate into blue. Maybe get a river hoopoo or something. So I guess we could take Ancient Crab. We're probably not going to want it, though. I guess we'll just take the Blur of Blades. Haze Apollo. Not really a card I like. We'll take the Doom Beetle. We could be a controlling green-black deck, but more, more likely we're going to be a nice green-white ramp deck. Last pick green card is a nice sign. Even if we probably won't play it. Wow, what a pickup here. Pride Sovereign works really well in my deck because I am a green-white deck, so I can make use of the exert to create two 1-1 one, one lifelink tokens. My Pride of the Sovereign will get bigger. After that, I think I would like to get a Cycling Desert just so I can have some more top end over Gustwalker. I'm not really trying to be an aggressive deck. When you have so many 7 drops, you don't want to put too much of a clash in your deck. Sure, I took a Gustwalker just because it was like the best card in the pack. And I tried, wanted to cut white a little bit so I could maybe get some white cards this pack. Because white was... We didn't see any... We, we saw a couple of Gust Walkers and stuff, so white might be decently open. But I like Pride Sovereign a lot as well. This is a pretty easy pick, I think. After that, I think I would take the Desert. Just so I can play 18 lands and not flood too much. I think I'm going to play 18 lands anyway, because look at how many expensive cards I have. But getting a Cycling Land would really help mitigate some flood opportunities. Okie doke. And now we will take Oketra's Attendant. I think Bitterbow Sharpshooters is great. It's a nice little, it's like a nice card that plays both sides of the ball, offense and defense quite well. We're not looking to splash final reward when we have like very little fixing with only a Ritualist and there's already a great card in our colors. Oketra's Attendant, just a very efficient body. Well, not efficient, but very value oriented body. A five mana three, three flyer is not too much, not nothing to scoff at. And the fact that you can get a two for one every time via either Embalm or cycling it beforehand is very good. So I like that. Okie doke. Now this is interesting. We're not really a try. This card is very good, but it's not really meant for our deck. Our deck isn't really a trial of solidarity deck. Sand Strangler is great. We don't have any deserts to facilitate it though, and it is mid pack, like early pack two. So we could, we'll probably end up with a couple deserts, but not enough to make the splash of a Sand Strangler worth it. This card is most devastating on turn four when you just like are curving out and you just crush them with it. Chef and Monitor, on the other hand, is perfect because it ramps us and is also a big threat all in one, which is really nice. Beneath the Sands is another good card for our deck, but I think we're just going to be happy at snapping up a Chef at Monitor, and it can even fix our mana if we decide to splash a color. 
Wow. Insult to injury is incredible. We're not looking to play insult to injury because we're not a red deck. Um, but this card is very, very good. It should not be going, what is it, fourth pick? There's just no red drafters from that direction, I guess. Because this card is incredible. Just dealing double, double damage. And uh, you just cast it on both sides. So it's six mana, you deal four to a creature, deal four to them, and all of your stuff damage gets doubled, which is crazy. Um, our aggressive deck would have been pretty crazy in this seat, I think. Here, I think it's between... We'll probably just pick up a solitary camel. Helps us survive those early turns. With the lifelink. And now a ritualist. I would love a hoopoo. It's unfortunate that it's in the pack that has the ritualist, which is the card that we lit we have to take over pretty much everything. Because look at our curve. Like, who ritualist into sandworm into se or sifter worm or overwhelming splendor is just so good. I wouldn't mind a hoopoo. Getting an Evolving Wilds and then relying on Evolving Wilds plus Chef and Monitor plus one of the source would be a pretty sweet way to ra uh, fix mana for a Hoopoo or something, I think. Okay, now I think we will take Compulsory Rest. It's, it's very tight every time. Um, currently, we don't have ways to fix our mana. We're not splashing black. I do love River Hoopoo. It works really well with like the get a lot of mana into play. We have two Oasis Ritualists to help splash it. But I think we just need cheap interaction. Like, we already have some really good tools for winning the late game. And we don't have great fixing. So I think we're just going to keep it consistent for now. Uh, I really am tempted, though. Prepare to fight is perfect for this deck. Gives me a nice life gain buffer. And also, oh, ah. You're going to um, give me another removal spell, which is good. I don't need a third sandworm. I already have three seven drops and a six drop and an overwhelming splendor so pretty fine on that front but giving a greater sandworm lifelink is incredible hooded brawler is fantastic still just going to take it because it's a good card we don't want the cheetah now we could take quarry hauler i think that's fine it has some nice synergies there's just a lot of stuff you can do with it Sure, we'll take a supply camp caravan. Okay, Forsake the Worldly can be a main deckable card. We're not really a combat tricks deck. Two Ritualists is perfect right now. We can almost splash basically anything, given our... like We would just need like a little bit. I'm just looking for... I wish we could have taken a hoopoo, but I think it was more important to get a compulsory rest. Because if you look at our removal, especially at the time, we didn't even have this uh, prepare to fight. Wow! We got the hoopoo back? Oh my gosh. Well then. Rewarded to the max. Splashing two hoopoos is a little bit much but with, with my current mana situation, but splashing one is totally doable. I just need one... Oh my gosh, and last pick, Bitterbow. This is really looking good for me. My goodness. Well, we're just going to take another Oasis Ritualist. Maybe if we're lucky, we can wheel this Hoopoo. Manglehorn can do some good things. Um, whenever you blow up an artifact with this, it feels like unbeatable. I do like Hoopoo, but I think we're just going to keep getting prioritizing our mana and prioritizing our ramp most of all. And the Hoopoo will be splashable with three... Uh, we'll just have to put one island in the deck, and then we can fetch that up with our Chef at Monitor. And then our triple uh, Oasis Ritualist can also tap to cast Hoopoo. Overall, very happy to see this. This is a great open. We don't have any deserts, which I would prioritize here in this deck. White Desert is great. But is it better than an Aven of Enduring Hope? Huh, I do like that life gain. The three life is really nice. We do have two five drops already. Hello, Enigma. How's it going? Hello, Draknorpt. Okay, so this is between the Desert and the Avon. I think we're going to take the Desert. Um, the Avon is a great card, but we have bigger things to ramp into with our Ritualists. And we want to make sure that we don't flood out in the late game, so we're just going to take the Desert. Wow, what a pickup. Mouth Defeat is one of my favorite cards in the set. Absolutely a house of a card. Creating a 3-3, drawing cards. And also, when you're not worried about making playables, like if you look at this deck, this is already 22 playables here. And sure, I'd probably want to cut the Ronas as Stalwart in an ideal world and things like that. But 
when you are not worried about making playables, taking lands makes a lot more sense. Hmm. So this pack is a bit of a dud. I don't like Feral Prowler just because you have no control over it dying, really. Uh, sure, you can block with it, but if you're chumping with your two drop just to draw a card, it's not very good. It's like a two mana gain three draw, like a revitalize, which is not great. It's a little bit, it's definitely, eh, it's comparable with that because not drawing the card is important. I think we're just going to take Heaven to Earth. Um, we have three Oasis Ritualists, so we could potentially just splash the Earth part of this without any other effect, which would be really interesting to consider at least. Okay, we're probably not going to have to, though. There's a Pact of Negation, which I don't love. Cartouche of Strength, there's a Desert. I think we just take the Cartouche. Cartouche is just a really good fight spell. We can now cut the Ronus of Starward. It just doesn't, isn't what our deck is trying to do. And Cartouche is just a nice addition. We can probably cut the Solitary Camel at this point. Hmm. This is an interesting one. Destined to lead. It's not really the type of card you splash. But this card could be devastating on like a Sifter Worm or something. There's also Synchronized Strike, which is just a very, very good card. I'm not sure how much we in particular would want it. Beneath the Sands is just not good enough when we already have so much like different ramp sources. Like this is a... We have so many ramp cards. I think we just take the Synchronized Strike. Wall, not really interested. Eh, we only because we only have one desert is the problem for wall. We don't really want the bitter bow. We don't want any of these blue lands. I think we'll just take the wall anyway. I don't mind a washer cultivator in this deck. Sure, we'll take an early drop, and now another hoopoo. What a pickup. This thing wheeling is great. Companion is a nice defensive card. We don't want a second quarry hauler anyway. Three ones block pretty well. Wow, another hooded brawler. We'll just keep taking hooded brawlers, I guess. Feral prowler. So this deck is really interesting. Um, we probably don't want quarry hauler. We have the four drop slot covered. Ooh, this is just a random two drop. Not really what I'm looking for. These aren't bots. These are people. These are human beings. Okay. So we have the two hoopoos. We have synchronized strike. Forsake the world leap doesn't really fit my deck. We just want defensive cards at two and I don't think we want the wall. Two mana 04 is not great. Synchronized Strike works well with my Hooded Brawlers. I'm not even sure how much I want Hooded Brawler, though. I think I'd probably play the Ronus' Stalwart over just some worse 2-drop. Like the wall, because I could have maybe some aggressive starts. Hmm. I think I play one island. That gives me three... Four, five blue sources for two hoopoos. And I do want to run 18 lands here. Ten, seventeen, eighteen. I think that mana base is probably fine too. And we'll probably want another forest in there. But we'll deal with that in a minute. Hmm. Bit about sharpshooters might be an interesting awkward spot. Like it might not be a card we want. Hmm. Huh. This is an interesting spot to find ourselves in. We have a lot of just solid cards. We have a lot of really good top end. We have three ritualists to facilitate the top end. So nice ramp. 
But then we also have some aggressive elements. I don't think we want the aggressive elements in the deck. I think we want to just commit. So I think we're going to cut the synchronized strike. I think we're going to cut the Ronus' stalwart. I think we're going to cut the gust walker. We'll play playing Feral Prowler over Gust Walker seems real bad. The Hoopers are kind of getting go in the five drop slot because that's kind of where I view them here. This is a combat trick, so we only have one real two drop here. We have one, two, three, one, two, five three drops I could see cutting bitter bow sharpshooters hmm bitter bow is just kind of a medium size does help against flyers but I have a couple of anti-flyer cards already like my removal can just be focused on flyers and it's not really making use of my ramp all that well I'm just gonna cut that guy and I'm going to add another 2-drop. And I think I'm going to want to bias my mana base towards green. So it's probably going to be this Ronas as a stalwart. How many creatures do I have? 16. We have a lot of creatures. And a lot of expensive ones at that. Hmm. I wish this wall was better in my deck. We didn't really take the deserts because we never really saw them at a good time to take them. Would I like? Would I actually want Feral Prowler in this deck over Ronus' Stalwart? The Hooded Brawlers are kind of off plan. Not gonna lie. They're just such a good cards, though. That makes it tricky not to play them. Like my plan is to survive until I can land a, sift a sandworm, hopefully on turn five. So facilitating that, probably just want a little bit more two drops. We have three early drops now. We don't need to overwhelm the three drop slot so much, I don't think. All of my three drops are great though. Hmm. Tricky, tricky, tricky. I think I'm gonna run it like this, and then I can cut up planes for another forest. Huh. Yeah. I think I'm gonna run it like this. It's gonna be a weird build though. Pretty weird build. Maybe I just want random two drop over that. So I can trade. Cause I don't want to fall behind on board. And this companion works better with feed. Probably don't want the Ronus' Stalwart. I'd rather have the Hooded Brawler than that. I'll just have the Companion because he can block like Ronus' Stalwarts and things like that. And I can use this guy to ramp me kind of sometimes. Or untap my like Ritualist. Huh. Synchronized Strike is really good as well. This card's just a beating. But I don't think I can consistently curve out on people. I have my Gustwalker and Ronus' Stalwart that could help me get a curve out draw, but then my other half of my deck isn't really participating in that plan. I think this deck is much more focused. It's kind of on plan. It's got its focus, so I think that's best. And I'll try this out and I'll see if it looks in the matches. Before I get to the matches, I want to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons over at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas, especially those who support me at the credits level. I really appreciate the support and thank you so much for helping me continue to produce high quality content on a consistent basis. It really does help me out a ton. And if you'd like more information about what it means to become a patron and the cool rewards you get as my way of saying thank you, you can find that information at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Without further ado though, let's get to the matches. Welcome to round one. We're gonna keep this hand. I did cut the Awasher Cultivator for Ronus' Stalwart for, like, because I just think Cultivator was never what I wanted to do on turn three. I have so many three drops that are good. I also strongly considered adding in just like Gustwalker, my third hooded brawler, and the Synchronized Strike to be more proactive, and maybe cutting like a Sandworm and two Hoopoos for mana reasons. Hard to hard to justify those types of changes when you're uh, building a deck, though. It's hard to figure out sometimes. 
Looks like we're against a ramp deck. Just gonna pressure them. But the hoopoos are really good. We'll trade this for Sidewinder Naga. They have a Cartouche of Strength. If they cartouche to kill my ritualist, I'll just compulsory rest it. struggling with this deck build still in the back of my mind. Okay. So next turn we'll draw two cards. They could have a board sweeper, which would suck for me. But, you know, you can't always beat a board sweeper. Okay, so they killed that, so now I can't feed for as many cards. We'll trade with Thresher Lizard, that's totally okay with me. So now we have a lot of good top decks. I just want my card. Yeah. We have a couple draw steps to draw something good, so we're not gonna just spew off our prepare to get a cantrip out of our feral prowler. Not yet, at least. I have like one more draw step or something before I'm really in trouble. They're not even going to attack with the Ceridon, I don't think. Oh, they are. That was really lucky for me that they did that. Overwhelming Splendor, right off the top. Come on, deck. Can you imagine how good that would be? Unfortunately, we didn't draw any of our top end, so we lost, which happens, I guess. Kind of sucks.
Real bummer. Give me overwhelming splendor. Yay! Nice draw right off the top. We're back in it. That really wrecked him. Really showed him who's boss. We're gonna do our best to survive here. This is where I need to draw Sifter Worm, River Hoopoo, start gaining some life. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. Any spell is good here. Wow. Just wrecked. So totally wrecked. Oh my gosh. Please stop saying in before. It's so old. I hate it. It's so irritating. Okay, cartouche is good. We just don't want them to go wide past us. We have three, they have five. There is some life link. I don't want to lose to a magma spray. That's my mission in this. I need Sifter Rumor Hoopoo to gain me some life to get me out of danger. Come on, Hoopoo. I know you're in there. Wow, they're not blocking. Okay. Please, I'm begging you, opponent. Please. I'm so afraid of open fire right now. So un... Unbelievably afraid. So I'm afraid of trample killing me. So I guess we block there. So if they have trample. We'll want to block all of our highest toughness creatures on their stuff. So like that. So if this is the, has trample, then I would take two from that. So I would go to one. And then... Okay, so if, I, if, if this is my blocks, I don't take any from that. I don't take any from that. And they like... I'm just assuming they kill this. Then I take one, 
two, three, and then I gain two, so I, I don't die. Beautiful. Boom! GG, Dan Lipman. I got the overwhelming splendor just in time. Whew. Crazy game. I'll see you folks in the next round. That was a crazy match. You may be like, oh, but what is Bitterbow Sharpshooters doing here? I cut the Ronus' stalwart for it, because I was like, my deck is just not a Ronus' stalwart deck. It looks like I have a very slow hand here, though. Heaven is technically playable for me, yeah. What a draw. Oh my gosh. Incredible draw. That's going to save me. I really needed that, too. Heck, that was such a good rip. But now that I have my mana developed, I can just jam the, ne the chef at monitor next turn. They're going to have to exert it so that I can't block. Or I could just play Bitterbow. I think I'm just going to play Bitterbow. I want to cycle this thing so I can get my island, I think. And draw into my other good stuff. Maybe I was supposed to just play it. This thing's gonna bring the beat down pain train. Never mind. It is no longer bringing the beat down pain train. Okay. I'm gonna just cycle the desert and then play this guy, I think. Ugh. I wanna be able to play my Hoopoo, though, is the problem. Maybe my deck would be better as just green white. But the Hoopoos are really good. The 6 5 God would be better. I don't think they can win anymore. I'm at 15 life. They'd have to be main decking for sake the worldly. Yeah, I know the Ritualist does, but I don't want to, like, rely on it necessarily. <sighs> yeah, I know how Ritualist works, chat. Let's end this game. We want to end it before they can draw a uh, Forsake the Worldly. Got the win. Overwhelming Splendor with the victory. I'll see you folks in the next round. I'm turn of the round. We have won the die roll again. This is a good hand. We can cycle Sandworm early. Oh, all good deck list. That's part of the fun is discussing things with chat. Okay. We are going to be cycling this Sandworm, I believe. Eh. Maybe we should just keep it because we can cast it pretty easily with our... Ritualist, yeah, we're going to keep it. That costs more mana. Ah, if it isn't my good friend, the Hoopoo. 
Ooh. It is the obelisk spider. The spider. Don't lethal sting me, bro. Bro! 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 No! What would you cut for it, Terry? There's so many, there's so many cards, so little time, as they say. Oh, the value. The value! Give me that land. Let's go. We'll accept the slight hit on our mana and not casting this next turn. This will maybe make him use some answers. In this way, we don't have to like rely on missing. A, if we miss a land drop or something, we could have gone Ritualist plus Hoopoo. That was another viable option. Don't cut, just add the card. <laughs> oh. Elsa, please, I know you're in there. Maybe Ritualist plus Hoopoo would have been better. Come at me! Avast. Just gonna play this to ensure an overwhelming splendor next turn. Cartouche? Who are you gonna cartouche? Ghostbusters! Don't cartouche my ritualist. Are you kidding me? No! No! Don't cartouche my ritualist! Please! Please! No! Whoa! Thank you so much for the raid, Ryan. Welcome, everybody. We're about to ruin our opponent's day with overwhelming splendor. Assuming they don't kill our ritualist. They've been hovering the scorpion, so I feel like a cartouche might be coming. But hello, everybody. Welcome. If uh, you're coming in from Ryan's stream and you've never heard of me, my name is Nikolai. I primarily draft here on Twitch, and I have a YouTube channel. And we're not blocking that in a million years. Come on, Overwhelming Splendor. Oh, this is going to be brutal. Oh, this is going to be brutal. This thing is just going to die. I think we're going to keep an extra blocker. So we're going to exert this for two white mana. And we're going to do this. This way we have two blockers, so in their quest to attack us, they don't have as many options. Ha <laughs> ha Oh, they just concede. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I would probably concede too. Like, there's no way they're ever getting through. If they don't have a way to kill this, which they probably don't, because there's not really a ton of good ways, they're just dead. So, yes, that is how it goes. Oh, gosh. Game. Overwhelming Splendor in the opener. It's kind of slow, but we got this thing as a three drop. You got to keep these hands when your deck isn't that fast and hope for the best. Prepare should be a good card here. Would I be happier if this was a Ron as a stalwart? Maybe in this exact situation. Prepare for mouth. That's a weird thing to say. It sounds sounds bizarre. Hey, they're they're looking for their second land. Do they hit it? They do. Good job, opponent. I'm proud of you. Know that I am proud of you. It is. I first picked it. Oh no. No, too many cyclers. Too much value. Okay. Well then, I'm gonna play this. Cause next turn I can exert plus mouth. <laughs> yeah, just straight red white chain whirler nonsense. Don't do it, no, no. Okay, that's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. The hippo is here. I 
This is the classic, are they going to bluff their cycler situation? Which they most definitely will. Next turn I can prepare to fight. Oh, they definitely have a cycler. My dream is to force them to tap out. And then I can go prepare to fight in one turn and gain like six life or 12 life with Bitter Bow. The Pitiless Vizier. The Vizier of Pitilessness. Tis a Pitiless Vizier. Oh, they've got the mill. Oh my gosh, I'm going to devastate them. Oh, they're so screwed. Oh my gosh, unquenchable thirst about to get quenched in a major way. This is where I hope they don't have removal. Like, what could they even have here? Bounce? Then I'll fight this vile manifestation. Hmm, I have six mana, so I'm just going to save the cartouche for my Pride Sovereign next turn. I gain one less life here, and I can't block Pitiless Vizier, but I think it'll be worth it. Because this way I, I can double spell. If they had a bounce spell, they would have used it, right? Oh my gosh, are they going to try and chain three cyclers in a row? Oh, are they going to mill themselves to look for three cyclers? That would be crazy. They would need three. Oh, they're going to do it. I respect it. Let's go. Do it, opponent. Go for the YOLO. Three out of four cyclers. They're like, oh, I can mill myself. Okay. They flip. They flipped one cycler. Yeah, that looks like probably game. They also screwed themselves on lands right there. If they tap out, I can cartouche this thing away. Gonna take my cartouche. What was foolish? I mean, maybe that's their only way to beat a 4 4 vigilance. No! You monster. That was pure evil opponent. They can get rid of feed now. I'm just gonna play my big creature. Ugh, I can I don't want to cast cartouche on anything, so I'm gonna just use my mana efficiently. Mana efficiency is the key. Oh yes it is. Ah Deadlands They're gonna use their return maybe? Six mana. Oh, well then. Okay. They hope to draw another Striped Riverwinder, I guess.
We'll make him use a cycler. Just gonna play another lethal threat. They're gonna have to do something. Them not having an extra land in play here is actually pretty bad for them. So we know they don't have a cycler. Or at least a one mana blue one, or they would have used it to stop themselves taking six damage, I think. Ah, the two mana O4. Hello. I hope they tap out. If they tap out, they're just dead. Okay, another vial. But do they have a Winds of Rebuke is the question. I have to do this, I think. I think I put it on Chef at Monitor, too. Get rid of the Shadowstone Vizier. This thing has to block that. Boom! Got the win. Looks like they were missing on Cyclers. Feels good. See you folks in the next round. Welcome to another round. Inept Mage did point out that I should have put it on the Sandworm because then it was just lethal because of the trample. Um, so I think I should have done that. Is this a keep? I think too much needs to go right for this to be keepable. I need to draw two lands. So I'm going to mulligan this. This is much better. I think I get rid of the Sandworm. Hello. Sacred Cat. Fight me, Sacred Cat. Because I made this shit and it's still out on the counter and the fucking ants are gonna get to it and I'm gonna be fucked. Okay, so I'm gonna either throw the fucking shit away or come in and okay? Just put it in the fridge. Oh my gosh. Artists. No, the ants, not the hamsters. Could you put a link to Jav? I don't want to have to scroll through it because it'll be really slow if I have to scroll through. Okie doke. So they can copy something. Hoopu will be my savior. I'll just start drawing extra cards. Mirror Mirage. I mean, Mirage Mirror is pretty good. That's really funny. You're right.
They can sack this. I'm okay with that. Thanks, Sujav. Hello, time traveling wizard. Ooh, backup hoopoo. -hoo. I'm not going to play it. I'm just going to activate this one twice. I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'll just have to exert one of them. Ooh, interesting. I suspect they'll sack this. Ooh, nice. We didn't cast any spells. Played around it perfectly. Batman? We're just chilling. Awesome time traveling wizard. No. Eh. I'm not sure. I don't know if they're allowed to copy an aura. Maybe they can. I think it might just die, yeah. We have our own combat tricks, so we're willing to let them use their, like, impeccable timing. Yeah. We were ready for you, opponent. Hit him for three. Got him. Pretty cool little animation there. That was definitely the order they did not want to play those in. So they don't have a combat trick, that's good to know. And they did miss a land drop, so they have spells. Okay, I have this plus two more activations. Whew. Ah, they tapped their mana wrong. Real funny there. Oh, gosh. This thing is really good for them. I know I can I know I can play the earth part off of ritualist. I just don't think it's worth it. Oh, there we go. I'm I'm trying to get a counter spell out of their hand.
Dang it, it looks like they have a counter. No, they just have a Mirage Mirror. No counter spell, please! Now they can't copy it if they do manage to get rid of the overwhelming splendor. At this point, what I'm most worried about is a board sweeper, like Hour of Revelation. No, but there's an aura that's attached to them. They can't make it attached to their guy. Just got to play it patiently. They're basically dead. And they are dead. Oh, yeah. I couldn't have copied Splendor. Good point. Good point. Whew. We're into Diamond 2. Pretty exciting stuff. I'll see you folks in the next round. Welcome to another round. Great hand here. Pride Sovereign's gonna be good. It may end up being that I can't play it on turn, use it on turn three, which is a little bit awkward. Eh, or I can just activate it and cycle this desert. Okay, we're definitely going to want to compete on that axis, so we're going to just activate as much as we can. Yeah. Copy enchantment enters the battlefield, I'm pretty sure. So we're going to cycle this desert. Yikes, that was a heck of a turn. So my 1-1s one are going to have to compete against their 1-1s. One one's Fan bear is irritating against my Ritualist. I'm probably going to have to punch that with a Cartouche. Oh no. Well, that card's really good. That card's like one of the best rares in the entire set, so. Gonna be tricky here. Let's just rip Overwhelming Splendor, shall we? If I attack, they're gonna quad block with those guys.
Okay. Nice. Good to know. Oh, it's such a good theme song, I agree. Oh, easy block. If they attack, oh, this is an easy block. Double block. I don't think the exiled permanent comes back. We're just going to be drawing cards with the Hoopoo now. We're just going to draw cards. I guess I should have done this on my turn. I actually I kind of want to hold up the blocker, so. Tokens, tokens for everyone. Funnily enough, a catcher's monument actually kind of does well against uh, overwhelming splendor. Oh, I could have played the initiate's companion. Wow, totally didn't realize that. They did not accomplish what they wanted it to. Well, that was slow. Weird how slow that was. Pride Sovereign coming back down next turn, getting that extra work going. I would think it would come back then. But yeah, that is a weird stack question. So they're going to probably bring back their angel and get rid of ritualist or something. These one ones are so expendable. Tokrop elite. Okay, that thing can't be allowed to live. I'd probably have to just compulsory rest that. If they keep trying to tap down my Ritualist. So I want a Compulsory Rest. So I'm going to Compulsory Rest and make two more 1-1s. One -ones. <laughs> I'm waiting for my uh, sandworms and sifter worms. Until it leaves the battlefield. Yeah, they're, they're both linked, kind of. So they can do this now. What are they going after? Oh, 
Oh, they're getting rid of the compulsory rest. I see. That could backfire on them. They do have a lot of damage this turn. This is tapping that. That's getting rid of compulsory rest. Sure. So three, six, ten, twelve, fifteen, twenty nine. Eat that guy. Trade with that guy. Double block one of those guys. Actually, probably better to just single block. Eh. I like double blocking. So I take 12... 16, 19, 22, but then I gain two, and I'll have to activate this before damage. So that I don't lose him. Attach it. I could attach it to the talk crop lead again. I think I have to go for the talk crop lead again. Yeah, I've got good blocks now. We're chilling. We're just gonna activate River Hoopoo so we don't die. Six. I could have played this companion, I guess. That probably would have been good. I keep missing out on putting the companion into play. cycle this and uh, use my hoopoo, I think. Big draw. Nope. Whiffed on that one. They have a lot of damage here. Coming in hot. Oh. So I have four. One, two, three, four, five. I have. I have 12 mana here, I think. This is I got to do this.
This is a big turn. I think I die, potentially. But I do gain a lot of life. So I'm at seven. I can block the initiate. Chump. No, block. Block. Um, I think I want the life linkers. I think I need the life linkers. This way I take six and then I'll gain four. I do want to eliminate them if I can, so I can add that guy. I'll take eight now. Take two, four, six, eight, but I'll gain four. No, I'm also taking damage from that, so I can't do the double block. So I'm taking three, five, seven, nine. And I gain four, do I go to two? Yeah. Dang it, they have a combat trick. Not gonna lie, their deck is super good. Dang it. So not getting that Initiates Companion into play really did cost me. Though it only would have mattered if I'd actually drawn like some crazy life gain because they just went so wide. Their deck was really good though. The Angel of Sanctions is such a bomb. Come turn of the round. This is a great hand. We got our three drop lined up, our four drop lined up. The hoopoos have been so clutch. Ooh, they mulliganed. Let's go. Stretch Armstrong. I've heard the name. We're going to cycle the attendant to help us hit our land drops. Beautiful. Beautiful. Play the hoodie B. I suspect we're going to have a very good turn next turn because we can exert if we don't draw a land we can exert the ritualist to use the prepare to fight all in one turn and so my hope is that we can prepare untap attack them for seven points of lifelink oh no uh oh well that did not go according to plan shall we say Okay, this is going to be close.
Well, I'm surprised they didn't attack with a pain caster. That was a little bit suspect. Just gonna bring this guy back. I'm I'm scared because they have Ramanap ruins, so I know they have some inevitability. I'm gonna kill that thing. They can ping it so that they trade. Beautiful. Next turn I'll play Sandworm. Come on, team. Yikes. I'm one point off. I'm so sad. <sighs> My feet also doesn't work as well now. Don't do it, opponent. Don't kill me now. Don't stop me now. I'm so scared of Red Cartouche! I'm so afraid of Red Cartouche! Oh, that's such a good draw. Okay. Oh my god, what a rip. Island is low-key incredible. I want this to be lethal next turn, so I'm attacking with this guy. Double the blockers! Double the fun! Woo! Ah! You are not worthy, Nassim. Two turn lethal! Did we do it? I think we did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Oh yeah, we did it. We're one win away from Max wins chat. Let's go. To another round. We have won the die roll. This is going to be the finals. We have our hoopoo and we can actually cast it in our opening hand. Let's go. The green white deck that doesn't need a planes yet. Oh, it could be our toughest matchup, our rival. Dun 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 Ooh. There's no way we're blocking, so we're just gonna do that and then play mouth. It'll force him to play a spell to deal with it. Sifterworm makes his first appearance of the entire draft. This card was our second pick. To be fair, I'm glad we've been drawing uh Uh oh. Uh oh spaghetti -o. That's not good. I don't like that. I don't like it. I have lost a quarter of my health points. That's not a good sign, chat. Not liking it. Oh, I'm in very big trouble. Oh, no. I just need to survive to get this sifter worm down. Oh, man. The real alpha play would have been to just go face with it. Alpha strike play, I mean.
We're just gonna activate Hoopoo, gain two life. And hope Sifter Worm's enough. I'm surprised they killed the River Hoopoo. Didn't kill the River Hoopoo. So there's two approaches here. There's the hope to YOLO a land off of my River Hoopoo, and then there's the responsible play Bitter Bow, trade with Spellweaver play. Oh. Okay, you cannot have Cartouche. I need my own cartouche now. Can I trade this with Aranesh? I can try. Forcing through the damage. Sneaking it through. I'm not liking this. This is looking bad, chat. Yikes. Oh, right, they get that back. Oh, I'm totally dead. Oh, I totally forgot they get back their trial. I might go to exactly one. It's not a land. We're gonna have to cold draw the land next turn. Big draw. Land, sifter worm into overwhelming splendor. Gosh darn it. Let's just see if Overwhelming Splendor was in our top three. That wouldn't have done it. No, we wouldn't have got there. Oh well. We tried our hardest there. Their flyers were too much for us. We needed some big life gain thing like our uh, whatever the plus two plus two. But anyway, we have one final chance at max wins. Stumbled at the end, but we'll get there, I hope. Welcome to the final round. We are on the draw, but we have a great hand here. Playing against S. Buckland. But once again, we're playing two, turn two Hoopoo. To keep us safe. Blocking this sounds bad. I'll block this thing all day. gonna block this. Then maybe I'm okay if they spend their turn three cycling. I think I'll you do that on another turn. Mm. 
Okay. I'm okay if they trade. They missed a land drop. gonna play a new one. I'm really okay with trading. I don't really do well against flyers and I just have to survive until I land this thing. Blue black can't get rid of it once it's in play. And next turn I can Shafet monitor into the companion because this brings in the land untapped. Not going to deal with any weird cycling shenanigans. Two cyclers is very reasonable to expect. Give me a planes. Whew, that could be really good. As I work my way up. Currently I have four, five, six, seven mana. We're getting there. So they did have a cycler. Ooh, wandering death hits the bin. I think they're missing land drops, so. So I could just attack with this guy. They're going to block there. We prepare and then we fight there. So we clear the board. Or I could prepare to fight that guy. Attack. Yeah, that's way better. Unless they chump this thing. Oh, wrong choice, opponent. Maybe, I don't know. I don't have enough mana to cast Splendor. Splendor costs eight, and I only have seven. I only have seven manas! They're just spinning their wheels, chat. If only they had Zenith Flare in their blue-black deck for Mammon Cut block. Wow, we didn't hit our second planes. What a bummer. Um, so now they have to trade with Initiate's Companion. Yep. I'm slightly afraid of Unburden, so I'm just going to hold this forest because it doesn't do anything for me. Unburden would get rid of both, but, you know, if I draw another forest next turn, got to think ahead. We're beating them with the beatdown draw. They don't see it coming. The Splendor shall have its reward! Oh, gosh. Oh, come on, Splendor. Yeah. I'll trade my 4-4 four, four for your 6-4. Ugh. I do need another white source. They have a lot of cyclers, so... If they drew Abandoned Sarcophagus, it would be kind of crazy. 
because they get to deploy a lot of extra stuff. But then I would be able to kill them with my splendor. With my splendor. Oh my gosh, Drake Haven down. Oh my gosh, that would have been terrifying. I could never have won this game in a million years if they had Drake Haven. I curse you, opponent! Thanks. <laughs> They're probably like, dang, I can no longer win. Wow, Drakehaven is such a sick card. They happen to mill it off their wins of rebuke. They look so good in their deck. I guess wins can bounce it. Good game. Boom! We got to maximum wins! At long last, we have risen to glory! We have ascended like the locust god before us. Or whatever. No. Like one of the cool gods from Amonkhet. Like Hazaret. Or Kefnet. No, Kefnet dies. Hazaret, the lone survivor of Amonkhet. Let's go! Feels good, chat. This was a sweet run. We managed to get to maximum wins with our epic overwhelming splendor deck totally got there when i was looking for the uh uh i first picked this i wondered if we could get there three ritualists later and we totally did this deck was super sweet and i really enjoyed playing it and i definitely think it is the type of deck that you can play yourself i think not playing the aggressive cards was really important because it meant that we actually did win the late game when we didn't draw our splendor so that was important um but yeah, that is going to do it for this draft video. If you were watching this on YouTube and you made it all the way till the end of the video, in the comment section down below, leave hashtag Splendor Victory or Splendid Victory, because I think Splendid is the like conjugation of Splendor that you would use there. So hashtag Splendid Victory, because this was m absolutely incredible, or hashtag Ritualist Splendor, or just really, yeah, I like Splendid Victory. Hashtag Splendid Victory to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video. Remember to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the comment section down below. It really does help me out a ton, and I do love interacting with you folks and answering your questions in the comment section check out the twitch stream oh also click that bell so you don't miss any future videos uh, you'll get notified when they go uh, go up if that's something you're interested in um check out the twitch stream live at twitch.tv slash nikolai bolas um and uh you can also d join the free nikolai bolas community discord server in the description uh, and pinned comment there's a link to that and also to the patreon if you want to support me directly give back and help me continue producing high quality content on a consistent basis check out the patreon at patreon.com slash nikolai bolas uh that is going to do it for this draft video though i do hope you enjoyed it and i will talk to you next time